Hi, I'm Umbreon Libris, and last week I posted my redesign of a very ugly Pokemon, Bruxish. And I do think that I made Bruxish less ugly, but I didn't exactly make it pretty. And part of that is the source, right? Bruxish is just so ugly that I don't think that it would be possible to make a new Bruxish that isn't ugly. But another part to it is that it's actually okay for a Pokemon to be ugly as long as it's ugly for a reason. I don't think that was quite the case with Bruxish. It wouldn't make sense for it to be a beautiful, elegant Pokemon, but it didn't have to be quite as ugly as the original is. But there are a lot of Pokemon that are ugly and that need to be ugly. So today we're going to look at the good and the bad in the ugly. Let's start with the bad, because as much as I want to defend some ugly Pokemon, I have to acknowledge that being ugly isn't always justified. And you know, there's a surprising concentration of bad ugly Pokemon in Generation 4, where I don't really see anything in their concept that justifies being ugly, or being ugly makes sense. Which might be part of my bias against that generation. Just as an example, there's Magmortar. It takes Magmar, which is a pretty ugly Pokemon to begin with, and just emphasizes all the wrong parts. Magmortar has a huge bulky body and these enormous cannon or flamethrower arms built on top of tiny stick legs. And it pairs that with the worst case of Duckface. Sinnoh introduced a lot of other bad, ugly evolutions, but I don't want to trash Gen 4 too much. Sword and Shield introduced a pretty standout ugly Pokemon, Carcoal. It's not only a terrible evolution to Roly Coly and just a bad Pokemon design in general, but the oversized Gen 1 style eyes that stick out of the head and the glowing gap to the mouth just make it one of the ugliest Pokemon of all time. Now, not every Pokemon that is ugly is ugly without a reason, but even some of those that do have a good reason don't really accomplish it in a good way, like Jinx. Jinx is at least partly based on a sort of mountain hag yokai called Yama Uba, so it would make sense for a mountain hag Pokemon to be ugly. Except there's not really anything about Jinx itself that really says that it's a mountain hag. But Jinx has been talked to death, so let's focus on a different example of this, Seismitoad. Seismitoad is based on a toad, and toads aren't exactly lookers, so again, it makes sense for it to be ugly. But one, the bulbous arms and the huge body on the tiny legs don't really seem to have any basis in the concept. Maybe I just really don't like huge bodies on tiny legs. Two, the loudspeaker or headphone motif that Timple did really well has now just turned into warts. And again, toads have warts, but not like this. The exaggeration, I think, could have been done well, but as it is, there's not really any sense or purpose to the arrangement and placement and size of the vibrating organs. And three, the face, in particular the eyes, just isn't doing it any favors. Timple had a cute face, Palpitoad mostly just looked derpy, but Seismitoad, with its relatively wide mouth and red eyes, just really removes any possibility of it being remotely cute. Then there's kind of the opposite of Seismitoad Pokemon that are meant to be ugly, but maybe aren't really all that ugly, like Perugly or Phoebus, for example. Being ugly is in Perugly's name in multiple languages, but really it's more of a mean cat than an ugly cat. I guess Perugly is pretty ugly compared to Glamiao. It may not be quite what you expect when Glamiao evolves, but ultimately it's a pretty average looking Pokemon. I wonder if Glamiao and Perugly are meant as a sort of commentary that wealth and opulence make people ugly, like on the inside. And Phoebus being ugly is its entire concept, right? It's basically ugly duckling, but also a Magikarp. And you can see how they meant for it to be ugly. It's brown with irregular spots, its fins are ragged, it's got sunken eyes and a sad expression. It's a Pokemon that is a trying to be ugly. And it's not that it turned out pretty, but it's also not nearly as offensive to the eyes as something like a Magmortar. 
But let's talk about the ones that we're really here to talk about. So those that are undeniably, but also justifiably ugly. There's many of them from Impidimp to the Galar fossils, but there's three Pokemon that are sort of the poster children for ugly Pokemon that deserve to be ugly. One of them is Barbarical, although for the record, I don't think Barbarical is all that ugly. I've seen a lot of people complaining about it, but to me, it's actually pretty cool. And not just because I like to imagine Captain Haddock yelling, blistering Barbaricals. Was, was that a good accent? No, terrible. <laughs> For those who don't know, Goose Barnacles, which are what Barbarical is based on, are crustaceans, so they're related to crabs and shrimp. But they look like this. I know this looks like an amputated claw, but trust me, it's the whole thing. The stalk attaches it to the rocks or something like that, and basically all of the organs are inside of the shell. It's got little legs that poke out of the top to filter for food. So, first, goose barnacles are bizarre and hideous creatures. You're not going to get a cute Pokemon out of that. Second, they look like claws, so a Pokemon that is entirely claws makes perfect sense. And three, they agglomerate into colonies. So this bizarre, ugly mess of a Pokemon is actually a very clever way to transform a goose barnacle into a cool and intimidating Pokemon. The second poster child is Crabominable. Now this isn't a Pokemon that I like very much, but I can't imagine a Pokemon like this not being ugly. It's got elements of crabs, which, okay, aren't really all that ugly. Uh, Yeti crabs, which aren't true crabs, but are truly ugly with their huge hairy looking claws. A boxer or other martial artists like the crab brawlers that it evolves from. And those people may be attractive when they're not fighting, but definitely not when they're on the losing side. And the Yeti, or the Abominable Snowman, a sort of Sasquatch of the Himalayas, a wild man or ape-like creature, not necessarily ugly, but generally thought to be ugly, especially with the Abominable nickname. And Crabominable brings all of those elements together wonderfully, with the huge hairy claws that also work really well as an evolution to Crabrawler, the white fur and blue skin that are typical to depictions of the Yeti, and the face that looks ugly and scary like you'd expect from a Yeti, but also looks like it just got wailed on with its two lonely teeth. So yeah, I don't think that a crab slash Yeti slash MMA fighter Pokemon could look any better than this. But of course, the reigning king of ugly Pokemon, topping most ugliest Pokemon lists since it was introduced, is Garbodor, the leaking garbage bag that completes the pollution trio along with Weezing and Muck. I probably don't need to tell you what makes Garbodor so ugly, right? It's lumpy and irregular, it's got a face that screams eternal pain, and the garbage aesthetic is just revolting on a visceral level. I spat there. That's how much... <laughs> that, that's how ugly it is. <laughs> but that isn't a bad thing. Compare Garbodor to Muck and Weezing, its predecessors, and if you can, take off the nostalgia glasses, because Muck and Weezing are undeniably gross. But their designs are also really simple. Introduce Muck and Weezing in a later generation, Generation 3 for example, and they become really boring and forgettable Pokemon. Their designs are worse than Swallet. So Garbodor being a more detailed design also makes it more memorable. Here we are, almost 10 years after Garbodor was first introduced, still talking about how ugly it is. If it was Muck or Weezing, we probably wouldn't be talking about it. And I think we can all agree that a garbage Pokemon is meant to be ugly. But to be fair, you could question whether we needed a garbage Pokemon, because just the fact that a Pokemon is ugly on purpose doesn't mean that it's necessarily a good design or a good Pokemon. Actually, that's my whole point with this video, to show that being ugly is not the same as being a bad design, or a bad Pokemon in general. Being ugly or pretty and being bad or good, those things don't always go together, but they're also not exclusive. And as usual, this is just my opinion of what is ugly, mostly. I did also look at some ugliest Pokemon lists that other people did, but ultimately it's all subjective. 
I think these are Pokemon that most people will agree are ugly, but if you personally disagree, that's fine. You may have noticed that this video is not out on a Friday as usual, and if you're interested in a channel update where I talk about what I'm going to be doing in the coming months, you can check the link in the description or in the end card to an unlisted video where I talk about that. I know that channel updates don't interest everyone, so I won't flood your inboxes. But I am interested in what you think of ugly Pokémon and whether you disagree with me on the ugliness of any of these Pokémon, and what your favorite ugly Pokémon is. Mine is Barbarical, let me know yours in the comments. Remember to click the like button to help boost this video. If you're new here and you want to see more, you can subscribe. Thank you to my patrons, especially luxury patron Ethan Saffron. I'm Umbreon Libris, I'll see you in the next chapter. Do you even remember Swallet until I mentioned it just now? I didn't.